Hey guys, welcome back to the Racing Dudes YouTube channel where today I will be previewing the Grade 3 Ford Gal Stakes at Gulfstream this Saturday, February 4th. We have a pretty large field of 10 three-year-old fillies going seven furlongs on the dirt. However, the dirt very may well be mud this weekend because looking at the forecast, it looks like it's going to rain all weekend and that could really change up the dynamic of this entire day. So we're going to start off with the number one, and that is Flakes, who has only raced one time and was able to break her main at Gulfstream Park. She pulled off the upset in that race where she beat the entire field by over three lengths. This, however, is a pretty big step up for her um, since her last race in December. She's going to want to stalk the pace and being in the number one spot, she should be able to get that done. However, I just don't think she is quite quick enough to be able to keep up with all these other girls going seven furlongs. The number two is twice as nice and has two wins under her belt out of five races. She won an ungraded stakes at Laurel back in November. Um, she's won on the dirt and the turf, so I like that she is versatile because with the rain coming in, you never know how the surf is going to end up being. She has a lot of early speed, and I think she's going to be fighting to get to the front of that path. The number three is Atomic Lee, who comes back for the first time since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Stakes where she really didn't impact the race that much. She finished in seventh place and was at least three lengths behind the winner the entire race. In her past, she was very impressive against maidens and then great stakes at Gulfstream, but once she got thrown in with the big girls, she kind of faltered. I also read the interview with Pletcher this past week. He doesn't really sound too confident with her. They wanted to run her in the New Year's, New Year's weekend. She popped a fever, she was sick, they had to pull out. Um, so they said that this race is her starting point, and at 3-1, to one, I think I'm just going to pass on her altogether. The number four is Arella Star, who is 2-5 for five in her lifetime. In her lone 7 for long start, she was terrible, but she did have issues loading. She's changed her running form in the last two races, and she's going to go for the lead. And you cannot look past her win in November, where she won by over five lengths on a sloppy track. The number five is a Propos, who also has a win on the sloppy track. Um, at six furlong, she drew off by over four lengths, so the extra furlong doesn't really bother me, but she's going to have to speed up quite a bit to stay with the front of the pack in this race. The number six is Lynx. She was three for three until she met up with Atomically back in October, where she was beat by over six lengths. However, I do want to mention that Doris Vader got third in that same race, and she came back to run an 85 buyer and win back-to-back -back ungraded stakes. I think she is on the upward trend, so she could be interesting in this spot. The number seven is Undervalued Asset, who is your morning line favorite for Chad Brown and Irad Ortiz. She's currently seven to two, and I wouldn't be surprised if she's six to five at post time. She won by over eight links at Aqueduct last November, so she's been off for about three months. She has a lot of early speed, but she is not the fastest one in here, I don't think. Um, and she has only been on a fast track, so there's a lot of factors that come into this favorite. The number eight is Red Carpet Ready, who is two for two with both wins at Churchill. She won an ungraded stakes back in November. Her maiden win was by over 10 lengths. She also has a lot of early speed, just like the number seven horse, so she has the opportunity to go gate to wire. And I especially like that she has a win on a fast track, and she also has a win on a sloppy track. Now, the number nine is Postiano Sunset, who is one for three lifetime. We have also not seen her since November back at Churchill Downs, where she won with an 80 buyer in a maiden special weight. The last horse is a number 10, Adelisi Smile, who most recently broke her maiden last time out in January at Gulfstream going a mile. She was able to get a 69 buyer for that race, but she was also on Lasix. The three races before that were all off Lasix, and her highest buyer was a 49. So, with all of that said, this race could go very many ways depending on the weather and the fact that half this field hasn't raced in three months, let alone some of these horses only have one or two races under their belt. Gulfstream Park Stakes races in the wintertime and early spring are typically always a cluster for these three-year-olds, so anything can happen. I'm going to bank that the track is going to be wet, so that is why I'm going to go with the number eight red carpet ready. I think that she is the fastest one in here. She has a win on the slop, and I think that Saez is going to send her and try to go gate to wire. Underneath in a trifecta box, I want to add in the other sloppy track horses with a Propos and a Relo Star but I cannot ignore the number seven undervalued asset. So that will be a four, five, seven, eight trifecta box. 
Now, I'm also going to do a Superfecta box since there's 10 horses in here. And I'm going to add in Lynx because I think that she is trending upward. So that will be a four, five, six, seven, eight Superfecta box. It's pretty easy. Just hit four through eight for that super box. Um, yes, I'm fading atomically because I do not trust her. I could be completely wrong. But I think if she was the caliber of Malathat or Nest, he wouldn't be putting her in this race. So thank you for tuning in. Make sure you are subscribed to the Racing Dude YouTube channel where they're going to put out everything this weekend for the Holy Bull. Um, I also want to give a huge shout out to the OG handicappers who sent me the sweatshirt with some others. Um, I clearly got my inspiration from the sweatshirt with my picks. So until next week, guys, good luck. RacingDudes.com is your home for the best free picks for every race, every track across the country. We're ramping up for the 2023 Kentucky Derby, and we want you to join us in the fun. Subscribe to Racing Dudes' YouTube channel, like click the notification bell so you never miss a single video. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the Racing Dudes.